So the next part of the equation is the question of whether the injured person is a worker. You may notice that I'm not using the word employee. And that's because a worker is defined in the Workplace Safety and Insurance Board Act as a person who has entered into a contract of service or apprenticeship, and it includes a learner, student, a member of an auxiliary police force, a member of a volunteer ambulance brigade, a member of a volunteer fire brigade, a person summons to assist at the scene of a fire by a fire chief, a person who assists in a search and rescue at the request and direction of the Ontario Provincial Police, and then a catch-all, persons who are deemed to be workers under the Act or under the Board's policy. So, for example, starting next year, every single person in the construction industry will be deemed to be a worker by the Board's policy because they want everyone in the construction industry participating in the system. So there will be no more self-employed construction workers when that provision of the Act comes into force. A learner has its own definition of the Act, which shows perhaps the, how wide the scope is. It goes far beyond employees. The learner definition says it's a person who, although not under a contract of service or of apprenticeship, but who becomes subject to the hazards of an industry for the purpose of undergoing training or probationary work. Now, the biggest problem you're likely going to see in your files is the question about self-employed persons and independent contractors. Because if there's a self-employed person who's providing a service, there isn't an employer and a worker, there's a supplier and there's a customer. In deciding whether someone's a worker or an independent contractor, the tribunal will consider the intentions of the parties as expressed in their contracts. But they'll use this only as a starting point to assess that relationship. The tribunal has said in many decisions that it's how the relationship works in practice that really counts in making this determination. So if, to give you a rough guide, a person who on paper is an independent contractor may be held by the tribunal to be a worker if they're paid by the hour only, if they work almost always for one customer, if the customer supplies the place of work and supplies the major capital investment, and if the customer controls the work. There are also situations where a person is not on a payroll because they're doing unpaid work to learn to do the job before getting hired. That brings us back to the learner part that we talked about. Or perhaps the persons are performing services in exchange for something of value. And a common example is the live-in superintendent for an apartment building. They're getting free rent in exchange for looking after the building. They are likely to be held to be a worker of the owner of the building. These last examples are less common than the independent contractor issue, but I do have had several of these applications in the past. And in fact, I'm in the middle of a WSIAT application before the tribunal right now where the person was injured during the hiring process. And we're having the big debate of whether or not they were a worker and in the course of employment. 